Welcome to another episode of Strat Exchange where we talk to uh, people in the industry, uh, entrepreneurs, people who have um, been successful in their areas of business and, and try to uncover some hints and clues towards where uh, all that success came from. Today I'm with Javier Perez and a uh, very interesting name for someone running a restaurant here in Singapore. We're going to delve a bit into that but before that I want to get myself a drink. Uh, okay. The last time I was here, you ordered this drink that was slightly reddish and it had, a, it had like a, a slice of ginger in it. Okay. It yeah. was a little bit spicy, but it had the this citrusy. That one. Yeah. Can we get one of that? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Javier, uh, tell us um, tell us where, how do you land in Singapore? Where were you from? Well, I'm from Puerto Rico. Um, you know, I've been in Singapore now 14 years. Uh, but I landed here uh, because uh, I was living in Thailand. Yeah. Uh, you know, after I left Thailand, uh, my now wife and I were, you know, talking about opening a business or setting up, mm. up, a, up a company. And uh, we looked at a few places and she is for, or she was born in Singapore. Oh. So we came and looked at Singapore and um, it just seemed like a brilliant place, you yeah. know. Uh, back in 2005 and so was it the first time you visited Singapore first time no no prior no expectations of what it was nothing, gonna be like nothing. I, I didn't even you know a year prior to me coming on that trip I didn't even know where Singapore oh was. my goodness right but so, you were in Thailand so I should yeah but a year before I moved here uh -huh. which was I was still in Switzerland oh, got it. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't know you know if you ask me where mm -hmm. Singapore I, I remember I met a, a guy in school, his name was David Lee, and um, uh, he came up to me one day and he's like, where are you from? And I said, oh, Puerto Rico. And he's like, where's that? <laughs> and we went to this huge map yeah. in, the, in our library yeah. and uh, kind of showed him where Puerto Rico is. And I said, where are you from? He said, Singapore. And I said the same thing, where is that? Right. So, you know, yeah. um, that's kind of my first... Um, right. Uh, I thought you were going to say he pointed at this uh, little dot that couldn't be seen on the map. Yeah, pretty because much. Because that's usually the, the problem, <laughs> identifying Singapore. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Did, did you know you wanted to do a F&B business back then? Or was yes. it just uh, open-ended in terms of coming to Singapore? No, I, I, you know, I've always known that um, I wanted to be involved in restaurants somehow. Okay. Um, and that started at about 12 or 13 years old. Um, and... Yeah, so I knew it was there. It was always kind of bubbling mm -hmm. there. It just I didn't know how 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 and when that was going to happen, but I knew that it was going to happen eventually. Okay. Um, so it was there. Um, it was you know underneath the surface. Right. It just needed right. some kind of you know push cultivating. Yeah. Coming to Singapore, F and B business. Uh, your wife, you were saying, was from Singapore, so it's a bit like a homecoming for her to come back here and start a business. Yeah, definitely. I mean, she left Singapore when she was four. Oh. And she never lived in Singapore, so she left when she was four with the family to Toronto. From there, they moved to Cebu, Philippines. From there, they moved to Los Angeles. From there, she moved to Switzerland, and where she met you, where we met, okay. and um, and you know, even with her coming back to Singapore, she hadn't been in Singapore for 20, 20 plus years, right? Wow. Yeah, twenty three wow. years or something okay. like that. Okay. So, so you could say that both of you coming here to Singapore to set up a business was like. Uh, it was new. completely uncharted waters for both. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, what was the scene like back then? Did you say nineteen two thousand five? Two thousand and five. What was the scene like back then for the F and B industry? Um, that's a great question. You know, I think it was. I didn't look at the scene the way I look at it today, or even the way I looked at it five years ago, or even ten years ago. Um, I think that we were so focused on what we were doing on learning right i was 26 going on 27 right she was 25 right. so we didn't know what we were doing right and we weren't necessarily looking at like a macro kind of like you know thought of like okay what's happening yeah. here how are people doing things we were just trying to learn how do we even operate a restaurant so you know we were very um focused right? it, and it was your the first restaurant concept that you guys operated yeah. together as well yeah so that's uh, first first business of this kind. Yeah. New location. Um, recently married, I assume. At that no, point. we we weren't married until uh, we got married in two thousand and fourteen. Wow. Right. Hi. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jess. That was lovely. 
Thank you. You brought two in case I was thirsty, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, bro. Yeah. Salute. But yes, uh, oh, so, so back when you guys were having all these new things happening, uh, new place, new business and everything, uh, you both were just uh, dating, you could say. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we were, we were really good friends who then, you know, we were in a relationship. I think, you know, we started as um, very casual uh, lovers, right? <laughs> if I could say that. Um, but, but it grew into, into much more, right? And, and so we were together for eight years before we got married. Nice, yeah. nice. And you were doing so many new things during this time. Exploring. I think we were just learning. Yeah, yeah, you know, we were exploring, we were discovering. Yeah. Um, we were learning. We were, you know, we we had an idea, but um, nothing was proven. Yeah. Even today, there's still a lot of things that aren't proven. Still experimenting yeah. all the way. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Um, before we go too far, why don't you tell me a bit about this drink? Um, uh, you named it? Do you, do you put no, it No, actually, this, was, this drink was made by... Um, you know, an, an incredible young woman who used to work with us named Joanna, who's now in New Zealand. And um, she had this obsession with, uh, with shrubs, right? And so she would make these great shrubs, you know, mm -hmm. like ginger shrubs and, you know, try all of these, you know, fermented things. And, um, and one day she came up with this drink, which, which is just really ginger shrubs, you know, uh, grapefruit um, uh, soda. Um, or, or, or tonic, I should say, uh, gin, um, and pretty much that's it, wow. right? It's pretty okay. straightforward, but it's okay. it's refreshing, yeah. cleans the palate. It's a little bit dangerous because you drink it; it doesn't you, feel you like it doesn't, the, yeah, it doesn't yeah. feel like there's yeah. alcohol yeah. in it, but uh, there's a good amount. You later. So if you have yeah. two or three of them, you'll be feeling quite quite nice. <laughs> I see. Yeah, that's the goal tonight, huh? No. Two or three of these. <laughs> 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 But uh, great, and and the naming of it is very um, local. Well, the naming of it just because we were here, right? It was a ginger shrub, and so we were like, okay, ginger shrub. But we're here on Kampong Bugis, and you know everybody knows the Kampong, and you know with raw, making it feel like a patio or making it feel um, like a bit of a a nursery mm. of sorts. Kampong refresher just kind of clicked. Yeah. Yeah. Easy. It spits yeah. the vibe of this place yeah. perfectly. Yeah. Tell me about what you were trying to achieve when you when you set up Raw in this way. Um I, I think ultimately it was just to transport people, right? We wanted to make our guests feel whether they're local, whether they're you know, expats or whatever it may be, we wanted them to make we wanted to make them feel that they were stepping away from Singapore. You right. know, that this was something different. You know, we're so accustomed to um, different backdrops yeah. and kind of uh, environments here. You know, that concrete feel. Whether it's a shop yeah. house or whether, yeah. you know, there, there, there's just different looks and feels to, mm. to parts of the city here mm. or the island. And um, like, how do we actually make a place where people feel that they're, um, yeah, transported yeah. in a way? Yeah, taken out from that, from yeah. that situation. So I think that's the greatest compliment, right, that we can receive is, yeah. you know, is, um, when, when somebody comes and says, I don't feel like I'm in Singapore, yeah. right? Or I feel like I'm on holiday somewhere. Yeah. Tell me, what was the journey like from the point that you started your first F&B concept and then uh, a full circle back to setting Raw up here again? Was it just a couple of months ago? Uh, yeah, nine like, weeks ago, actually. Nine weeks ago, wow. Yeah. Okay, yeah. perfect timing. Tell me about that journey. I think it's super interesting. Um, you know, we moved here, there was always this dream of owning and having a restaurant, mm -hmm. just one restaurant. You know, we never thought that, okay, well, we're going to, you know, do multiple concepts and we're going to, it was never that. It was just like, we just want one restaurant and we want to, you know, entertain people and make them feel good and yeah. transport them and hopefully do okay food. And, and so that you know, what we did with the first Raw Kitchen Bar pretty much set us up for what happened with Kilo. So Raw was pretty much the foundation, right? Like, even when you looked at Kilo and everything that we continue to do, whether it's through Grain Traders or, you know, whether it's through anything else that comes, I still think that that initial DNA and that initial foundation, it still exists, right? right? And it was always about 
how do you how do you create a place that is multi-sensory, that is multi-dimensional or faceted, um, and that people go away feeling that they've been fulfilled by more than just food, mm. right? And um, and and so we saw that kind of like really take root with Kilo because then we were able to go into music and go into a bit more cultural aspect and and do things, you know, whether it was in a mall or, you know, with fashion and, or whether it was, you know, um, uh, here when, when Camp Kilo was open. Um, and so then you saw this beautiful kind of universe, right? Yeah. Um, and, and we will continue that today, you know, with, with, um, with Royal Kitchen Bar, it's kind of a return to that, right? Um, and... Yeah. yeah. So, so, so that's almost 15 years of a uh, running restaurant concept. 14, yeah. 15, 15 in July, yeah. Wow, that's a long yeah. time. It is a long time. <laughs> what's been the What's been the the hardest part about about being a F&B entrepreneur? Um, I think the hardest part is is um. You know, you can talk about all these operational things, right? Like it's hard to find teams, it's hard to find, you know, good people, it's hard to kind of put the puzzle together. But I think sometimes like the hardest part is just yourself, right? Um, you know, kind of uh, not believing or, or having doubts or um, uh, having insecurities mm -hmm. or, you know, um, not being prepared not being as organized as you can be right. um, so I think all of those things have been uh, been tough because then that also impacts everything that's going on right, right. It, it impacts right. all the moving parts um, so it's like mastery over your own your own uh, actions and uh, thought process is that is that what you're saying like like you got to get yourself in that frame of mind and in that, in that zone to be able to do all the other things right yeah, I think, you know, like for everything in life, there's there's always an exception, right? And there's been people who have been able to, to build and do these great, you know, things or, or, or these great places. Yeah. And, and maybe it just came naturally or didn't, they didn't have to do too much. Um, but that doesn't work for everyone or for the, the, the vast majority, right? And so, you know, for the vast majority, um, you have to think ahead. You have to have a good amount of foresight you have to plan mm. and um, you have yeah. to be organized yeah. um, you know the details are what separate all companies you know that's 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 the reason why you find restaurant groups that are you know uber successful yeah. but at the same time they're they are crossing every t and dotting every i and you know they're, they're no extremely team. meticulous right when no it comes team. to uh, what they do yeah um, so yeah, you know, I think that just that, just mastering that, like you, yeah. like you rightfully said, um, ha has been a has been a great challenge. I don't look at it as a challenge. I look mm. at it just as a kind of the process, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I like I like the point that you brought up with regards to like the excellence in execution. You know, crossing the T's and dotting the I's might might seem like a very minute thing when the as the restaurant concepts grow bigger and bigger, but for a concept like uh, for F and B concept, is that daily ability to, to bring that A game to the experience of uh, anyone that's coming in consistently over and over again. That must be tough. I think it is tough. You can't have a down you can't have a down day, right? You can. You can. I mean not everything is perfect and not every day is going to, to be smooth and consistent. Mm -hmm. But they can't be you know uh, those those days can't be has can't be, be constant, has to right? Be the rarity, right? Yeah, they have to be very rare. So, yeah, yeah. you know, you can have off days, and people will have off days. Mm -hmm. And you know, our kitchen may have an off day, and yeah. you know, our, our operations team or our service team may have an off day. Yeah. Uh, we as management may have a hard or an off day. Our guests can have an off day. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so, um, but you know, for the most part, at the end of the day, anyone who's in the service industry. You know, you're in the in the show industry. You're in the show business ah, industry. You know, right. you always so have to front be front-facing. You, yeah. you, you, you don't get to do stuff from a back room where nobody sees, right? Mm. Everything is visible. So hospitality is that. Hospitality is 
a stage mm -hmm. and you're constantly performing and you're continuously, you know, um, ensuring that you're giving a great performance and that people are wowed by it and, and, and um, that they want more. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. How do you, how do you as a, as a founder and an entrepreneur that's leading these teams, uh, how do you keep them motivated or on their toes, you know, to, to keep delivering that, that their best in which, which uh, opening? You know, that's a question for the teams, okay. right? Because I, I, teams, yeah. I may think that I'm doing something and, and mm -hmm. you know, kind of like uh, your perception of self is very different from out outwardly perception. Mm -hmm. um, I think that what I try to share with our teams is that whatever you do at work, right? Whatever you're doing every single day, yeah. however you're doing it, right? Whatever measure you're taking to um, to execute something. That attention bleeds over into who you are as an individual, who you are right. in your personal life. Right. And so I think that everything that you do in your professional life, which is, which pretty much takes up the majority of your life anyway, That's because right. you know, we're working we 8, 10, working. 12 yeah. hours a day, yeah. um, is, is definitely going to bleed into mm. who you are, your character, That's your values, person, right? your whatever that may be. And so um, I think that what I try to share is the fact that, you know, these details or this discipline or, or whatever it may be that we, um, that we nurture yeah. um, and cultivate, uh, hopefully it will add value, not only to your working or professional life, but also to your personal you as a person, right? life and yeah. your relationships outside of work. Yeah. Yeah. I like to think of it, and I really like that concept that you just brought up, but I like to think of it as the reverse, where um, how you are like in your professional life is actually a reflection of what you are as an individual already. You know what, you know mm. what I mean? Like, like if you if you are someone that treats people well and, and, you, and you focus on uh, the well-being of those around you and people, you are going to be like that as a leader in the, in the business environment mm. as well. Uh, and and I, I like to think that um, what we are as individuals, we're going to be true to ourselves, right? We spend so much time working that we can't be putting up a completely different act in the business environment. No, you versus, won't be able yeah. to, right? If not, at some point, it's going to be uncovered. Yeah. Right? I mean, that's happened even with me. You know, there's times where I feel I'm not um, an adequate leader, right? Or I'm not a, a, a perfect boss, right? Um, and so even though we have had our successes, I definitely can't attribute it to myself, mm -hmm. right? Um, there's a lot of moving parts so in a company factors, and right? in the yeah. organization. And, you know, if we didn't have certain people at certain time, yeah. um, we wouldn't be where we are today. Mm -hmm. and, and, and today, yeah. maybe, you know, um, we're facing trials and tribulations mm -hmm. um, in our company, uh, but you know, you hope like anything in life, everything is a cycle yep. and that you come out of it and continue to, to have better days, right? Yeah. As you move forward, so. You mentioned about uh, the, the people at that time that made, you know, whatever it was that you're working on a success. Yeah. And I'm such a big believer that uh, the right people make all the difference for an organization. Yeah. Uh, how, how, do you, how do you look at your talent pool and how do you decide, yes, I want this person on the team or, um, what are the additional type of talent that I need to add to this team to make them strong, stronger? Um, Do you guys have interview process that you go, you go through uh, certain questions that you ask or what do you look out for? That's a great question. I think that it's something that we have to, we have to work on mm. um, and that we have to develop further. I can't say that we have these like, you know, precise questions that we mm. ask and then that kind of triggers, oh, okay, mm. you know, um, this is the type of individual or right. type of personality we want. Right. I think a lot of it is intuitive, right? The vibe, the yeah. vibe you get from the person you talk yeah, to. Yeah, and you, 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 know, you kind of go through and ask them, you know, uh, yeah, certain questions, but a lot of it is, is vibe, it's intuitive, it's, yeah. you know, what I look for. And I think that, um, I've said this a lot, like, and I want to get, I actually want to get out of it where, you know, I feel that our company being so small, right. um, the positions have always been very entrepreneurial, right? So <laughs> yeah. people have Another to kind of doing it, doing do it yourself. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and wearing multiple hats, right? Yeah. 
And so, um, you know, I look for people who, who can take it, right? Who not only have that dexterity, yeah. but they also have initiative, right? Yeah. Or have foresight. And, and today, if I'm, if I'm completely honest with you, you know, we're in a time where um, loyalty is not good enough, mm. right? Like the act of somebody being in your organization for X amount of years just doesn't cut it anymore because it doesn't necessarily like move the needle right. into progression, right? Because exactly. then there might be kind of a spirit of complacency. There might be a spirit of comfort, mm -hmm. right? And so that's challenging. Yeah. Because how do you then, you know, um, go into a place where you're trying to reinvent, where you're trying to, um, you know, uh, have a new um, energy. Yeah, rejuvenate the, the creative process. You know, and it's almost like, you know, I look at, I look at sports, you know, I take sports into account a lot. You know, yeah. even, even um, uh, our GM in, in business development, uh, uh, director who's who's now actually he's departing from our company next month wow. but him and I would always use sports because yeah. you know sports is great in, energy in, sports, with, yeah. with business and so you know there are times where somebody has to get traded yeah. somebody has to get cut somebody right. has to get fired in order for you to like win a championship you know you can't mm -hmm. just think that okay well we'll give it one more try this year we'll give it mm -hmm. one more try and so those are the tough decisions that I think that we're going to be faced with this year yeah. right if we want to be in a different place mm -hmm. what are the different trades and moves that we have mm -hmm. to make yeah and it's tough mm -hmm. right because some people are family mm -hmm. right yeah and and um, this sports analogy is something we talk a lot about even in strike guys uh, i often use the analogy of a sports team a highly functioning high performance sports team trying to get the job done and not everybody makes the cut to be on the on the court on the field every single game, and there are some that need to be benched for a while uh, to get up to that speed. So right? how have that you level. how have you handled that in yeah. your own business? It's it's, it's, it's really tricky. Uh, I I like to think that everybody we bring on the team uh, can take a position on the court and play immediately, but that's not always the case, right? And so uh, we have a concept of uh, the team being on the on the on the playing field, and what we what we demand from the players on the playing field is that you always know that the person that's on your left, on your right, or whether you pass the ball behind or forward, the person that picks it up and runs with it is equally capable, if not better than you. And that's kind of how we, we, we feel them. And then if someone doesn't seem to be cutting, not running as fast as the rest, not, not playing as well as the rest, uh, we go into this period of what I refer to as like benching. So we, we bench them for a period, uh, put, put more But focus. how do you bench them? Uh, in terms of uh, the workload as okay. well as the supervision. So, so we, we work So you a, decrease the workload, increase the supervision? That's right, exactly. Uh, increase the supervision almost to a micromanaging uh, kind of kind of thing, which is not something we practice as a company. We do, I, I, I barely know what my team is working on on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, except for the output that I get to see when it comes up. Uh, but for someone who is not making the cut, uh, we spend a lot of time coaching and, and, and uh, looking at the, the minute day of what they're doing during the day, whether the efficiency of the work or even the, the little skill sets they are missing in terms of working as a team, putting together a video, um, you know, doing a graphic, whatever it is. Mm. You know. And then of course, you know, if after that benching process that you know you, you can't you can't see that person making the cut back onto the field, then you know, you have to make the you have to make the decisions on the best decision on behalf of the company. Yeah. I think that um, forming that team of people that can that can look over their left and their right shoulder and know that there's the team around them on that court on their side are dependable, trustworthy and play at the same speed and the same same uh, level as them is so important. I really, yeah. really believe that. Yeah. yeah, it's a living and breathing organism, right? Mm. It's always changing. There are some constants, but you know, and, and it's also changing when the expectations or the demands of the company or business change. There you go. Yeah. Right? Because every year it may be, you may need different, um, yeah, different expectations, different objectives yeah. or goals, right? And different skill sets yeah. to, to make that happen. Yeah. You mentioned just now about um, the times that we are in right now. 
I think that's a, a very important part. I mean, you mentioned how it, uh, it probably was like back in 2005 for the F&B business, and then you guys just came out of, uh, uh, they're just coming out of this pandemic situation mm. that uh, ran some F&B businesses to the ground, and you guys just knew like I've been here on a weekend eating, it's packed out. And you guys are doing something right. Um, what, what do you think about this current climate that we are in with regards to the f and uh, industry? It's tough, right? I mean, it's uh, it's right in front of you, right? Um, and um, like anything, you know, when, when, there's, when there are stresses or a pandemic or something that goes wrong, a crisis, um, not everybody comes out of it alive, right? And so, you know, for the F&B industry, I think that a lot of us have suffered you know even those that still remain open mm. it, it's not without scars I, I, right? I'm sure yeah um, and even today you know even though we're open we're very fortunate and blessed that people are coming here and, and thankfully in, in Singapore we're very lucky right because yeah. since people can't really go out everybody's <laughs> here yes. internal, they're spending their money here internal so, tourism. Yeah. Um, you know it's yeah it's very Insular, right? What it has taught me is this, is that, you know, the old saying of you always must be prepared for a rainy day, Yeah. you know, that's this at a much like blown up scale, right? That's what we're and in so, right now. Yeah. And so I think that one thing that I, that I took away from this is how going back to the discipline or the focus or the tightness of a business or a company, how tight are you keeping things, right? Right. Because if you have X amount of accounts pending and, and X amount of suppliers backlogged and yeah. X amount of this, yeah. it's already catching up to you regardless of a crisis or a pandemic. But when a crisis or a pandemic would come, it's your right. It's going to, yeah. yeah, it's going to knock you upside down, right? Right. So therefore, you know, that's the one takeaway, which is make sure that, you know, everything is always... Right. Uh, yeah, I'm almost ready. You can have this one, actually. <laughs> uh, I can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, just, just do it. Okay. Just yeah, do it. I'll, I'll take that one. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, no, so, so yeah. you know, just that we have to have our house in order, mm. right? And that's not only professionally, but personally, right? People that were impacted, maybe they were overspending, mm. right? Or yeah, stretching leveraging themselves. Leveraging too much and uh, you know, up their means. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah. so that's the same thing with the restaurant, right? If you are, you know... You know, I, I started to say, wow, you know, we need to look at our restaurants as, you know, if we have 60 or 90 days to pay, yeah. we should never go past 30 or 45, uh, right? Okay. Keep it even yeah. tighter, right? Yeah. And, and I think that Don't that's, have anything pending, backlog and stuff like Exactly. That, yeah. Try to keep everything to date. Now, that's, that's only as good as what you're, you know, what your company is actually Making bringing in, cost. Yeah. right? Cash flow is still king. Yeah. So, but... um. I think that that's what I learned and, 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 you know, I've always believed that death is not only a, a you know, uh, you can't escape it, yeah. but death is, is necessary. It's essential. Um, and it's an awakening, right? So what I mean by that in that context is, you know, when you see all of these other companies, Closing when you see restaurants, at least for myself as a restaurateur, seeing restaurants in LA, even you know, right. now that we've opened in LA, closing, then I'm like, I would have never thought that that restaurant would have ever closed. Uh, yeah. Like, you know, um, there were some surprising ones. Yeah. yeah sure. And so, you know, you just start to like, wow, realize and, and wake up that, you know, not everything is as it seems. And you just have to be grateful that, okay. You're still alive. You're yeah. still kind of making, making strides. Mm. And how do you, how do you continuously pivot yeah. through the storm, right? right? What makes you optimistic about the F and B uh, business uh, in the years ahead? What, what, what do you, where do you think it's going? Who said I'm optimistic about it? <laughs> <laughs> you just started a new restaurant concept. That's it. Nine months ago, of course you're um, optimistic. Nine weeks ago, sorry. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. There's always going to be space for something mm. somewhere, yeah. 
right? Um, that's just the fact. It's just whether you, you, you know, get it and mm. kind of click um, or not. Um, yeah. So I still think that, you know, we have concepts that we could present to the world or to this market or maybe even other markets that people will gravitate to, right? Like, you know, one thing that we try to do is, is, is work from the heart, be genuine, um, try not to overthink it or overanalyze it. I think that that's when I've gotten myself in trouble yeah. is when I overthink it. I used to always give people advice and I always used to tell people like, don't look at what other people are doing, right? Just like stay in your kind of path. And when, when you finally bring your head up, you're going to realize that you're probably ahead of what everybody else is doing. Hmm. Um, but I haven't even listened to my own advice over the last handful of years. Because yeah. then you're kind of looking at like, yeah, well, oh, what is this group doing? Yeah. What is this person doing? Oh yeah. my gosh, they're doing it better. Yeah. You know, and so you, you get all these distractions. You yeah. then that feeds into insecurities, fears, yeah. you know, yeah. doubts, yeah. you know, all of these you things. You always feel someone's doing it better than you. Which and, may not be real. Yeah, of course. Right? It's a and so, right? Yeah, yeah, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, I see what you mean. But um, yeah, I, you know, there's I'm up because I still believe that there are things that we could present mm. to Singapore and and even beyond Singapore um, that we believe that people will gravitate to. Um, and there's only one way to find out by opening. You know, the Stop day that try. yeah, you know, Vince Carter, right? Vince Carter, I don't know if you know who he is, but he's a basketball player. He played for, you know, I think he was like 43 or 44 yeah. and when he retired, right, yeah, last year. Or, true. And so you just, you step out on the court until you feel like you can't anymore or you actually realize, okay, I can't anymore. But right now we still feel that we can play, yeah. we have things to offer. Yeah. And um, yeah, we've got, you know, a bit of, a lot of life in us. I love it. I yeah. love it. What do you think is going to be your, your biggest challenge this year ahead? Rebuilding, right? Um, rebuilding a new team, um, having people believe, you know, um, not only in what we're doing, but in myself as a leader, having people believe in the direction. Um, for the, sorry to interrupt you there, but for the listeners who don't know the context, why, why are you rebuilding? Um, so, you know, last year we stepped away, my wife and I stepped away from the Kilo family, right. um, you know, that we founded and, yes, and we started. Yeah. Um, and, and that's been taken over by one of our business partners. Okay. Um, but now we, we've we kind of come in and contracted a bit. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we're now looking at Raw Kitchen Bar. We're looking at grain traders here and in the U.S. And then... Uh, whatever else may come. I'm also working on a small project in Malaysia at the moment. Um, But, you know, so today, I feel like we're back in like 2013 or 14, you know, in terms of a team. You know, we had this great upswing when we had this really great team of people and, 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 uh, and, 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 and a lot of people in the office and it was really great and I thought we were going in the right direction and um, and we've taken a bit of a blow there right yeah. um, and that's come because of also kind of um, disjoining the companies and starting all over so sure. you know that's that's pretty much why we're rebuilding and so yeah. we have to rebuild marketing teams you know uh, management teams wow. um, and and understand what we're really doing you know I think that that sometimes you're so in it, yeah. and thankfully things went well. They went okay, yeah. um, but I hope that if this is our second go at it, that we can take from our learnings and yeah. and yeah. build upon that. I was just gonna say it's uh, probably quite rare in life to suddenly, after you know that many years of experience, to get to start over again. But with the benefit of hindsight, um, to hopefully avoid some of the pitfalls of uh, the first decade. Huh? That's the hope. Entrepreneur. That's the hope. <laughs> <laughs> all right man i'm not gonna drag this out i think you um 
very very interesting uh, stories and uh, thoughts that you guys have and uh, all the best with uh, Raw and all the other concepts you're going to bring to the Singaporean audience thank you yeah thank you and all the best with your podcast <laughs> thank you know you very and, much. and just yeah. bringing together good minds and and, and great dialogue yeah. you know and just um, yeah pushing kind of uh, you know knowledge and uh, and culture out there sharing just sharing, sharing. yeah cool. so this is the first but definitely not the last time we'll be speaking on this yes. podcast I hope well we have um, about three more kampong refreshers this week right <laughs> I think so that's what you told me <laughs> thank you so much Javier really yeah. appreciate it man. cheers cheers, cheers bro. Now it's time to say goodbye <laughs> to all our family. What he said. M I C. See you real soon. <laughs> K E Y. Why? Because we love you. M O U S E. Mickey Mouse. You know this song? <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> all, right. all right. If you guys got any questions or comments about uh, what we talked about today, uh, questions for Javier uh, with regards to the FMB industry. Um, please drop a comment in uh, right below this video. We'd love to hear from you. If you have any one you have in mind that you'd like for me to talk to in the next podcast, please also send, me, send, me, uh, send in your recommendations. Uh, we'd love to have them on the podcast. Thank you very much. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.